Welcome to my channel, Geek Lit Read Stuff. Uh, my name's Erica, and today we're going to do my October wrap up, as well as like a really small November TBR want to read. I'm not very good at making plans ahead of time. I'm a huge mood reader, but there's some stuff coming out in November that I really want to get to, so I have some stuff that I need to finish up first. The first thing I read in October was The Calculating Stars by Mary Robinette Cowell. Uh, this was such a great book. Uh, it takes place in uh, 1952. A big meteorite hits Earth and it smashes like on the east coast of the United States and it sort of causes us to jumpstart the space race because we determine that life on this planet may not be sustainable. Uh, so we follow uh, Elma York. She's our main character throughout the first two books of the series. Now, Elma used to be uh, like a female pilot in World War II, and now she works as a, ca as a computer for the International Aerospace Coalition, which is like a bunch of different nations got together to get us off of this planet. Now, this first book follows Elma as she aspires to join the program as an astronaut. Uh, we follow her. She, there's a lot of sexism she has to deal with, a lot of racism, which kind of comes more into play in the next book, and how she sort of uses the media to make this view of herself as like the lady astronaut, and that gets her kind of on board. Uh, there's wonderful characters in this book. I fell in love with Elma from the first page. I liked her struggle. I think the author did a great job with pacing. These books, they're not super long, about four, five hundred pages, but they really sort of flew by because I was so invested in the characters. Um, I, I say I don't like alternative history, but every alternative history book I've ever read, I've enjoyed. Okay, so the next book I read this month was The Faded Sky, the sequel to The Calculating Stars. Uh, this book takes place about a decade later where we're trying to get to Mars. I'm afraid of saying too much about this to spoil the last book, but the series is called Lady Astronaut, so you can probably figure out that Elma becomes an astronaut. Uh, we see kind of the same characters throughout both books, so we kind of get to watch them grow over time. Uh, there's a character introduced in the first book, Stetson Parker, who plays a big role in this one. Uh, he's a bit of like a rival to Elma. They had some beef in the past, and their relationship really kind of develops in this book. Uh, these are fascinating. Fascinating books. I really love them. I'm more of a science fiction person than a fantasy person. Doesn't really look like it behind me. But I love sci-fi. And this was really just kind of scratched an itch that I'd had for a while. Because I haven't read a lot of sci-fi this year. Uh, next I read Horror Store by Grady Hendrix. Uh, I listened to this on audiobook. It's available in that like audible library that they have now for subscribers. It was about, I think about seven hours. Uh, Horror Store is about this big box store similar to an Ikea, but it's not an Ikea, that's built on this like spooky area. So like weird awful stuff starts happening to some workers that just happen to be stuck there overnight. Um, it was fun. It was fun. Uh, it wasn't like super memorable. It wasn't super scary, but I had a great time with it and I'd recommend it to anyone if you're just looking for like a small little book, especially to listen to on Audible. Like that, that was worth it right there. Also the only audiobook I listened to this month because I am in an audiobook slump. Does anyone else go through this? Like you'll listen to books for months and months and then you won't touch Audible for like six months really hate that happens to me because I was in the middle of re-listening to Wheel of Time. I'll get back on it. Uh, next I read How Long Till Black Future Month by N.K. Jemison. This is a collection of her short stories. I had started this book a few months ago but uh, I just bounced off of it. Not that it's bad. This was a good collection and there's some really strong stories in here. I just don't know how to read short story collections. They remind me of like the books we had in high school to read for literature class. 
or English class. So this is the first short story collection I've really tried to read as an adult. Uh, there were several standout stories in this that I really enjoyed. Um, there were a few that were weaker, I mean, like with any short story collection, I assume. The short story that she went on to kind of develop Broken Earth, uh, it's in here, as well as another one from one of her series. Also, there's a short story that kind of connects to the we became. But if you're a fan of N.K. Jemisin, no reason not to pick this up. You'll enjoy it. I enjoyed it. I don't know if I'll be going back to it, but that's okay. Okay. After that, I read Traitor's Blade by Sebastian D. Castile. I read that on my Kindle, so I don't have a physical copy. And that was probably the book I enjoyed the least this month. Uh, it just did not click with me. Although I do plan to continue reading the series, it might just be a while till I get to them. Uh, basically in uh, Traitor's Blade, we follow these three guys, already forgot their names. I think one's named Falco, probably the head guy. But anyway, we follow these three dudes and they used to work as gray coats for the king. Now what the gray coats were, were kind of like these traveling magistrates who sang. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately for the Greycoats, uh, their king really ticked off some dukes. The dukes rolled into town with their armies, and the king said, nope, let them kill me. You know, you guys, you guys go on, finish this quest that I give you. So dukes came in, killed the king. The Greycoats kind of fell into disgrace after that. So these three guys were just kind of cruising around, trying to take care of this quest, trying to follow the ideals of the Greycoats as much as they can. And then they get wrapped up into this whole political intrigue going on. The book was okay. It really was okay. I know a lot of people really, really love this book. Uh, I thought the characters were fine, especially our three main green coat, gray coats. I wish they had spent more of the book together because I liked their dynamic. Uh, the dialogue between them was witty and smart. But then uh, Falco goes off for huge chunks of the story on his own. There's also a female villain, completely already forgot her name, doesn't matter because she's very mustache twirling, like she's just evil and does evil things and makes an evil horse because she's evil. And it dragged on my last nerve. There's also a scene that's pretty rapey, but the guy that gets raped is sort of into it and that just didn't hit me the right way. But, you know, I've heard the series does get better, and I already own them all on Kindle because they were pretty affordable. I'll probably go back to this series maybe sometime January, February. I I'd, I'd plan on giving at least one more book a try before I give up. I hate to DNF things. Like Once I get started on a series, I want to finish it. After Trader's Blade, I, I reread The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang. Uh, I've read this not long after it came out. I got it from my library and I just blasted through it. So by the time the Dragon Republic came out, I had already forgotten every single thing that happened in the Poppy War. But with Burning God coming out next month, I really wanted to get through this series. Um, just like the first time I read the Poppy War, I really enjoyed it. It's a great story. Uh, by the end of the book, I really did like the characters. I did feel like the part one of the book that takes place in the military school just drags and drags and drags. I hate that part. I have more problems with Ren this time around than I did last time. But overall, I was excited. I'm excited to move on with the rest of the series. I really do like it. It definitely got me interested in the real world kind of inspirations behind this first book. So I need to learn more about that. And finally this month, I read Embassy Town by China Mieville. I read this for my library's SFF club. Then I missed the meeting where we talked about it. But at that point, I only had a little bit more left to read, so I just finished it up. It's very hard to explain what happened in that book. Uh, basically, far off into the future where, you know, Terrans are on all these different planets and we have some form of like travel through them, you travel to them through something called Emmer, which takes like, I guess, specialized people to do it. Our main character, Avarice, is someone who can travel like that. 
So she leaves her hometown of Embassy Town, goes off, does world adventures, gets married, and comes back home with her husband. Now, she is from a place called Embassy Town, which is where the hosts live that are these aliens who speak something called language. Now, these aliens cannot lie. Their language does not allow it because there has to be feeling behind words. You know, like if you had a computer read their words back to them, like, like in Siri's voice, they just wouldn't hear it. They wouldn't understand it as words. There has to be intent behind what is said. So anyway, we really can't communicate with them unless we use special people that are two people kind of trained to think and speak as one. So we don't understand each other, not at our core, because we don't understand how they speak, how they think. We have no way of understanding. So anyway, a new guy comes into, well, two new guys come into town who can speak, that's what they're called, Ezra. They come into town, but there's something about their lang the way they speak language that the aliens get addicted to. And I mean, I'm talking like full fledged, like a drug addiction, you know, they, they're sweating, they won't eat, they twitch, they, they get violent, they just need to hear those words again. And a group of these aliens decide that they don't want to be like that. So they cut off their ability to speak and to hear, and they just kind of become this army. And really the story kind of follows Avarice trying to figure out a way to get the aliens so where they can communicate with each other again, cure this addiction, and hopefully allow the Terrans to stay there. This was a great book, but man oh man, that first 25% makes no sense. None at all. I had no idea what was happening. In some ways, China Mieville's writing reminds me a lot of Ursula K. Le Guin, who's one of my favorite writers. You know, you get tossed in, you have to figure it out, and there's a lot of just group dynamics, sociology, anthropology, a lot of that feeds into the story. But, I don't know. It was my first China Mieville book, and I think I enjoyed it. I just finished it last night, and it's definitely one of those books that I'm left to sit there and think on. I do think my opinions will change over time on that one. So that was my wrap up for October. Um, I'm just surprised I got through that many books because if I feel like I'm coming into a reading slump, I don't want to blame Malazan, but I feel like I'm still recovering from Memories of Ice. I will get back to that series eventually. So next let's talk about uh, some of the books that I'd like to read in November. Now I'm awful at TBRs. I cannot plan ahead to save my life. I'm very much a mood reader. So hopefully these are ones I'll get done. So I only have three books that I'm kind of planning on reading in November with the understanding of that The Burning God and Rhythm of War are coming out this month and as long as I'm done with Dragon Republic I do plan on jumping into The Burning God. Okay. So next, is, or first, is The Relentless Moon by Mary Robinette Cowell. Uh, it's, I guess, around 500, so it, gosh, it looks a lot bigger than the others. Uh, I believe, I don't really like to read the back, but I believe this is like a side story of a character named Nicole who is featured in The Faded Sky. I believe this is kind of a story of what happens with her while the events of The Faded Sky are happening. Yeah, yeah, that's what's happening. <laughs> um, I'll be honest, I didn't really look to see what this book was about when I ordered it. I was just like, oh boy, yeah, book three of the Lady Astronaut series. I'm not very excited to read about characters that aren't Elma and her husband Nathaniel, but I will get to this. I'll get to this this month, and I'm sure I will love it. Okay. Uh, next this month, we have Mad Adam by Margaret Atwood. I've been reading this series kind of slowly throughout this year. The first book I read this year was Oryx and Craig. Around June, I read The Year of the Flood, and I'd really like to get this series finished up this year. I am enjoying it, and I do look forward to finishing this series up. And finally, unsurprisingly, The Dragon Republic, which I am getting to 
soon. Like I will start that this one this weekend because I have got to get through this before Burning God comes out. Because I want to start Burning God when everyone else in the world does. So, and then of course Rhythm of War when that comes out. I have it pre-ordered on Audible, but I think I might just buy it on my Kindle. I would buy like the hardcover, but I I already have the paperbacks and I don't want to jack it up. So I guess I'll wait a year for the paperbacks. So anyway, what are you guys planning on reading this month in November? What did you read in October? Have you guys read any of these? Did you like them? Did you hate them? Are you mad at me for not liking Trader's Blade? All right. Well, it'd be great to hear from you guys. And if you like this video, like and subscribe. Leave some comments. I'll see you guys later.